ni ma nan kia ma nan ke yo ge chua eh cha chuan bo ma ke ge nyo bo ke den chang wa la ka bo ba nyo ke mi chuan ge de eh ke chuan me la ro de ko tu kon ka bo ko ja ka tin ke ro kon eh na me la bo da ni di ma ke de ba chen ke chuan ni chang ni me ben be nyo ke chuan le eh na me la fiel president pa to to ka ni a lo al na ke ge de ben nyo bo คนนั้นแล้วเด้อเจ้าลุยตัวพี่ก็ชั่วชั่วแกนี่อยู่แน่นอนอันนี้แกบาบิชูลเอ่อบาไปบนบาบิชูลบอดันเอ่อไปชู
that they are going to present a special song. Please, my choir, can you come up for a special song? Pastor, it's a surprised I have a choir. My choir had more than one member. Where are the other members? There's also another lady, I don't know where she is right now. My choir, please. We are going to ask all of you to join in the song. But for now, it's only the choir singer. Of course, the commission is Yeah. 
Next time we will learn another song. And I believe my choir will continue to grow. Thank you very much. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank this week we have been talking and last week for the last two weeks about how long and we've been asking ourselves how long God as the book of uh, Psalm 13 says and keeps asking how long will you forget me forever? How long will you hide your face from me? How long, Lord, will I continue to be bothered in my mind? How long, God? How long, God, will I continue to suffer in my heart? How long, God, will my enemies triumph over me? And as we have been looking at how we suffer in this world, how we are troubled, how we are in pain, how we are not happy, how things don't work out for us, we learned three things that we must continue to pray. We must continue to trust in God. And we must continue to rejoice and worship God. This life we are living is full of trouble. It is full of suffering. It is full of pain. It's full of tears. And it is full of heartaches. And we know until Jesus comes again, we will continue to suffer in this world. Let us have a word of prayer. Father, we commit ourselves into your throne as we are able to study your word, speak to us and prepare us for your kingdom. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. Amen. We were traveling with my daughter and we were traveling from the country of Ecuador. Ecuador is in South America. And we were going through the Pacific Ocean in a boat, a speedboat, uh, to the islands of Galapagos. Galapagos. Islands of Galapagos. And Galapagos. They are known all over the world because they have the rarest species. Of animals and of plants. And the island, the islands of Galapagos, and Galapagos, they have refused to allow people to live there and ruin their natural habitat. You see, like birds that you cannot find anywhere in the world. Which are called the uh, the blue boobies. blue boobies. You find plants that you cannot find anywhere else. Being a conserved area, 
UNICEF UNICEF to preserve the nature there my daughter and I felt we wanted to go and see the place. So we went to the land of Ecuador. Ecuador. And from Ecuador, the capital city. We took now the speedboat to Galapagos. The speedboat would take us about two and a half to three hours to make it to the Galapagos Islands. And many tourists go there to see the Galapagos Islands. So when you get to the port, they record all your names, they record your nationality, and they record all the details about you, and they release boat after boat accounting for everybody who is going to Galapagos. The boats leave about 6 in the morning, so you make it there by about 8.30, 9 o'clock in the morning. You spend the day there seeing and uh, being able to enjoy the things there. They explain to you all these things they have that you can't find anywhere in the world. And at uh, 3 o'clock, you all go back where the boats are. You get on the boats. And you go back to the mainland of Ecuador country. So we woke up very early in the morning. With my daughter. And we got into one of the boats. And we sailed all the way to the Galapagos. There was a tour guide with us who was explaining to us let the native talk. As we were going in the ocean. And he tell us, you see those islands there? Nobody lives there. But the animals there. You see those islands there? Nobody lives there. No animals live there. There is nothing that grows there. And we went with the boat. After three hours as we arrived the Galapagos Island. We got out. We were so excited. Then we got out. And the tour guide was explaining to us, you see this plant. This is a species you can find nowhere else in the world. And this plant grows here. It is called Eliza. It is called ABC. It is grown and it grows after two years. What makes this plant unique is look at the stem. Look at the branches. Look at the leaves. You cannot see a plant like this anywhere else in the world. And we would walk again in a tour guide. And we would see the plant in the water. Do you see uh, that insect right there? Look at it carefully. Look at how many legs it has. Look at its color. You cannot find any other insect in the whole world like that. Right? And what makes it unique is because of ABC. We would walk more. And uh, he will tell us. Do you see how uh, the land is here? The landscape is here. Look at the layers of land here. You can find nowhere else in the world like that. And we were so shocked. 
And we could not believe all the things we were being shown. And the two guys kept walking us. And the two guys kept on explaining to us. And finally, he took us uh, at the shore of the ocean on the other side. And he said, Do you see these birds? There are no birds like this anywhere else. They are so unique. Look at their feet. The way they are webbed. Look at their beaks, the way they are formed. Look at their eyes, the way they look. Look carefully their body formation. This is only found in Galapagos. Nowhere else in the world. It was such a uh, it was such an enriching experience. As we were being explained all these things. And we could not believe what we were seeing. And we were busy writing and recording the things we were being told. And standing and taking pictures. That we could show people what we had seen. Finally, the tour guide say, We have 30 minutes. We all need to go back to the boat that we can sail back to Ecuador. And with that 30 minutes you have, you can eat if you are carrying something to eat. Relax. Walk around on your own. But in 30 minutes, when you hear the whistle, all of you come back to the booth. So we had time out. We had carried some sandwiches with my daughter. So we sat down and started eating the sandwich. And we were just exchanging thoughts. Can you imagine how God created so many different things? And my daughter was asking me, Mommy, did you see this and this? Did you hear what we were told about this? And she was she went on explaining. And she said, This has been a place I'd wished all my life to come. In the whole world, I have longed to come here. Just to see how things have been preserved here. And Messed up by human beings, and they are so beautiful. All different colors, all different formations, all different types of creations. And then we ate. Your name is? We were tired because we had been walking the whole day. So we said, let us just relax. And after 30 minutes, we had the whistle blow. So we woke up and everybody else woke up. We went all the way to the boats. By the time we reached where the boats were, people were being recorded and entering the boats. Once a boat would be full, it would be released. The next one would come close. People would be recorded. People would alight. It would be full. It would go. The next boat would come here by. Names would be recorded. People would alight. And we were in the line queuing up to enter the boat. Finally, it was our turn. Our names were recorded. 
this were recorded, we entered the boat, they counted all of us, and confirmed all of us who were in the boat, according to the list they had, and we started sailing. At this time it was uh, getting to about 4 o'clock, and everybody in the boat was talking. We were talking what we had seen, there were people from all over the world, from Australia, from Asia, from Australia, Asia, from America, America eh? from Indonesia. Uh, apparently, we were the only Africans. And uh, we were like, God has given us an opportunity to see things that many people have never seen and will never see. And people in the boat were trying to know each other. And people in the boat were trying to know each other. So they would ask you, where do you come from? What is your name? And we went on socializing. And we were like, oh, this is a little bit of a problem. And we were like, oh, this is a little bit of a problem. That was now 5 p.m. We went another hour. This was 6 p.m. And immediately, after our second hour, our boat started having problems. And the captain of the boat was trying to fix, we could see he was struggling to fix something. And the engine would go, and as it would go, we started getting worried. He was busy trying to fix. He worked on the boat. He worked on it. All the other boats passed us. And now we could not even see any boat near us. But the captain kept on working on it. It was 6 p.m. It got to 6.30 p.m. And finally our boat went to the motor stopped working. And the captain said, Oh, the motor is not working. And the captain said, Oh, the motor is not working. And the captain said, Oh, the motor is not working. And the captain said, Oh, the could not start at all. And the captain kept on trying to work on it. And he kept working on it. Six hours later, the boat was starting to get dark. And the waves started becoming bigger and bigger and bigger. So the boat would move one side and the other and the other. And we were holding on to the boat because we didn't want to fall. It was 8 p.m. And the captain said, Oh, the boat is not working. We had been warned before we left Ecuador in the morning that all boats must come back to the port before 7 p.m. Because the water becomes very rough at night. And when we are far off from Ecuador, even navigating and getting in touch with the tower would be very difficult. And the waves became bigger. And the waves became bigger. We are moving. Water started coming into the boat. And as the water came, we were throwing off the water. And the captain sat down. He had given up. And he said, Oh, the boat is not working. And the captain said, Oh, the boat is not working. The engine had stopped. The electric 
electrical system of the boat was not working anymore. So we were in darkness, we could not see anything, there was no light. All we could hear is the waves. This was 9 p.m. People started throwing up. They were vomiting because of the waves. They started becoming seasick. And we started asking the captain, what becomes of us? And he said, there's no way we can reach the tower. We are still very far from the tower. And now I'm not even sure where we are. We cannot even know the direction of where we are going. Because the boat keeps turning and turning and turning. So we asked him, so what happens? And he just looked for us, looked at us. And he said, there's nothing we can do. The people will find out we never got back. Because they have a record of all the people who came out. But they have no way of knowing where we are. And people kept on vomiting. The two started. Four. Five. Six. So everybody was there. And the captain was just sitting somewhere. Ten o'clock at night. And he said, I hope we are not near where there are lots of hippos and crocodiles. And even, no, no, they were not hippos, they were sharks, sharks and crocodiles. Because if the sharks get near us, they'll capsize the boat and swallow all of us. So there's nothing we can do. All we can do is sit and wait. As the captain finishes is telling us all we can do is sit and wait. And he started to ah! also. So we were all standing there and we Everybody in the boat was throwing up. Now. My daughter and I, we held each other tight. We were not vomiting ourselves. And we started praying. And my daughter said, Mommy, let us pray. Only God can get us out of this place. And we started praying. And we prayed. It was midnight. Everything was dark. All we could hear was the water and the waves. People had thrown out, thrown up so much vomiting. They were so weak they were just lying. And I was there and I because they were so weak because of throwing up. The whole boat was full of vomit. But nobody cared anymore. And we started, I started praying out loud. And say, God save us. God save us. God have mercy upon us. It was 1 a.m. And we, 1 a.m. And as we, everything still was dark around us. There's nothing we could see. The captain had actually now slept. People slowly by slowly were sleeping. And the waves still continued. And people were tired of even holding on. They just allowed the boat to take them wherever. Two a.m. They had to wake up. Three a.m. They had to wake up. Four a.m. They had to wake up. Five a.m. They had to wake up. And everybody had reached a point and said, "We are dying." And they were 
at about 3.30. As we were praying and I was praying out loud, God help us, God save us, God have mercy upon us. You know God, you can help us through this one. I don't know how, but God, I'm trusting you can see us through this one. Immediately one lady who had come from the islands, Pacific Islands, said, look, look, look. We looked and we saw a small light very far away. And she said, Captain, wake up. Is that a light there? And we all looked and said, yes, that's a light. And he was rubbing his eyes and said, which one? Where is the light? And finally he was so look there. No, no, there, right there. When you see right there. And the captain looked. And looked again. Looked again. And said, that's the lighthouse. That is Ecuador. Let us go towards Ecuador. And he started on board. He started, we all started doing that with our hands like this. We did our hands and the boat would turn one way and the other way. And we would look and we would see that it was so far away. But it was so far away. It started getting closer and closer and closer to us. Closer and closer. And we used our hearts. We used anything we could pedal to go to where the light was. And as we got closer and closer and closer to the light, everybody was so excited. Now we could see lights in Ecuador. In the land, now we could see lights and houses. But the big light was still shining on us. And we went towards the light. And as we went and got closer and closer and closer. And closer and closer and closer. And closer and closer and closer. And closer, and closer, and closer the people who were standing at the lighthouse. The lifeguards. They, they saw us and they started clapping. Hey! You are finally back! And they said, Oh, you are back! Five a.m. in the morning! Five a.m. in the morning! We found the lighthouse. We finally made it to the mainland. Why did we make it to the mainland? I want to pray, Raymond. The lighthouse. We are all living a life in a troubled sea. The life we are living today, we are living a life where we are in troubled waters. A lot of suffering. A lot of pain. A lot of agony. Some are giving up. Some people around us are so tired. But this is the life we are living. And we are told we will live. We read from the book of um, Revelation 22. Revelation 22 verse 7. That tells us, Behold, I come quickly. Behold, I come quickly. God is reminding us He is coming back. When God comes back, we will no longer be in this earth where we are in troubled waters. When God comes back, we will be in this earth where we are in troubled waters. We will go to live with him for eternity. The disciples of Jesus asked, 
From the book of Matthew 24, verse 3. Come as you told you, not one, brother Georgia. But Jesus, you are telling us you will come back. Yes, you that is your How will you know when you are about to come? What are the signs? And he told them four things. The first one he said, when you hear war. And hear rumors of war. Matthew 24. Verse 3. Brother Georgian. You start from verse 3. And the first thing, there will be wars and rumors of war. The second thing he said, when there will be famine, the third thing, earthquakes, and the fourth thing, thing pestilence or diseases. And when all these things happen, then you know about to come. And he says, verse uh, 14, and he says, I come quickly. You, I want you to read that particular one, verse 14. 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 But we are being told when all those things happen, Jesus will come again. I, I want to start with the wars. Wars and rumors of war. We know there is war in Russia and Ukraine. We know there is war Israel, the Gaza, and the Palestinians. In fact, it's on record as of today there are 32 countries at war. In the whole world, 32 countries are fighting each other. We want to you what you need to do the job to hear when we talk about conflicts right on the big gun from one community to the other the people will look at the we have more than 300 conflicts back on good job between one tribe and the other to the door on the door when you hear wars and you hear rumors of war who you call it and it's all calling the wars are happening Korea to walk in the town we have heard of wars, we know of wars. Meaning the one thing that God said must happen, it has already happened. The second one is famine. For Kenya today, we have 15 million people who are starving to death. Because there is no food. For Ethiopia today, Ethiopia, we have 23 million people without food. If we talk of Somalia, our neighbor, 60% of people in Somalia are facing famine. When we think of the whole world, we are thinking of 775 million people who are starving to death. They are having famine and having nothing to eat. This means the second thing Jesus told his disciples that it has happened. Famine, people are starving. But now three can long time for the time. The third thing Jesus told them is earthquakes. We had an earthquake uh, actually in Nairobi, in, Ken in Nairobi actually. In Nairobi, Kenya. Three days, four days ago. We had an earthquake in Guam last night. We had an earthquake in Papua New Guinea. We had an earthquake in the Philippines. We had an earthquake in Peru. In Peru. In Chile. In Chile. In Panama. In Panama. 
Which means the same thing Jesus told us that there will be earthquakes before he comes. It has happened. And the fourth thing, he said, when it happens, you know I'm about to come back. It is pestilences or disease. All of us had. Had about COVID. COVID swept everywhere the whole world. COVID, we won't tell you that yet. There is no country in the world that did not experience COVID. Tell me, wait, we can't COVID yet. I cannot talk that. And COVID killed the young, the old. It killed the male, the female. It is on record that COVID killed. Seven million people the whole world. And the people that were infected were more than 300 million people. So when we talk about diseases, diseases have already happened. So the four things Jesus said, that when they when the disciples ask, how will you know you're about to come? What, what signs will we, can you tell us, we'll see to know you're about to come? We have seen wars. We have seen pestilence. We have seen unheard of earthquakes. And we have seen unheard of famine. That all the things God said would happen, they have already happened. Yet we are still living in this world where we are in troubled waters. Remember I said our life in this world is like we are in a sea. In troubled waters. Where there are high waves. Sometimes they want to uh, swallow us. But these things will come to an end when Jesus comes. These things will come to an end when Jesus comes. So when we continue to suffer in this world, when we continue to ask God, how long will we continue to suffer? How long, God, will you continue to hide your face from me? How long, God, will you continue to hide your face from me? How long, God, will I continue to be troubled in my mind? How long, God, will I continue to be troubled in my mind? My heart. How long, God, will my enemies triumph over me? We know it will happen until Jesus comes. It will happen. It will, will continue to have these problems in this world until Jesus comes. We are told in the book of Matthew 24 that when Jesus comes, Jesus comes. Jesus comes. Jesus comes. Jesus comes. You can read 13 and 14 because I've already talked about 14 about Jesus coming. Okay. Lara Jacaramu, what the Kadia, and the Pekka, by the can. Kabasu Korakos, you go to Tila, you want to know the Queen and Rodia, Kajan, Gurua Shuban. We are being told that wickedness will continue to be more and more. Now, come to the next young girl, but we will never run. Which means who continue? More and more. But the person that will be saved, the only person that will be saved, is the one who will be saved, will be the one that stands firm. The one who stands firm up to the end will be the one to be saved. That if you remain faithful to God up to the end, then you will be saved. Again, by this you can. We are reminded that Jesus is going to come again. And 
And some people ask themselves, What do I need to be saved? What do I need to do to be saved? I want to say being saved is only three steps. Three steps only. The first step is to accept what Jesus has done. And what Jesus has done is he sent his only begotten son that whosoever believes in him should not perish but have everlasting life. John 3.16 So, and when you believe what God has done in your life, you are able to acknowledge that the penalty of sin is no longer with you. So, that is what we call a you know, theologians use big words. Uh, and they call that justification. That accepting what Jesus did on the cross for you. That God's death on the cross was has been able to remove the penalty of sin in your life. The second thing you need to do is what God is doing in your life right now. What God is doing in your life right now. We read from the book of John 17, 17. I want you to read it. John or I do and so Lane Karo, or I do and so That we are being reminded that I am going to what God is doing in our lives. When they put the right take at that, that we are saved by grace through faith. And what I come can couple bank was I come can can us that what God is doing for us now is removing the power of sin in our life. Removing the power of sin in our life. When he removes the power of sin in our life, then we are just uh, sanctified. A big word the theologians use sanctification which is able to explain what God is doing for us now. Paul said I die daily. And even in the Lord's prayer we pray for strength from day to day. That God is doing in our lives today through his grace when we accept him by faith he removes the power of sin from our lives. The last thing God, uh, salvation is about is what God will do in our lives. What God will do in our lives. That we are told in uh, the book of Thessalonians uh, 4, 13 and 14 that when Jesus comes all eyes will see him. That Jesus is coming again. That when Jesus comes again when Jesus comes again, he will remove the presence of sin. And it is called by the theologians glorification. So we are saying what God has done in the past by his son Jesus Christ dying on the cross for our sins. We are talking what God is doing Today, that through faith, through his grace and accepting him by faith, he removes the presence of sin, he removes the power of sin over us. 
And what God will do in future. That behold, I come quickly. As he says, he is coming back again. And when he comes back again, he will remove the presence of sin in our lives. So, this is what salvation is. That though you are in troubled waters, though you are struggling and you are in suffering and you are in difficulties, you want to say, God, I accept you for your son who died on the cross. I accept you by faith today and I am looking forward for your soon return. This is what salvation is. What God has done what God is doing and what God will do removing the penalty of sin by Jesus dying on the cross removing the power of sin by accepting him by faith Removing the presence of sin by us waiting and that blessed hope for his second return. The book of John 14, 1 verse, uh, and through, uh, 14, 1 to 3. I want us to read it. Yeah, 14, 1 1. Uh, John 1 1, verse 1. Believe in God, believe also in me. In my Father's house are many mansions. If it were not so, I would have told you. I go to prepare a place for you. And when I prepare that place for you, I will come again and receive you to myself. So where I am, there you may be also. 